You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Kodiak streamlines the software development process by eliminating traditional DevOps responsibilities for engineers and redefining their approach to software development, product management, and cloud architectures. With Kodiak, engineers can fully integrate and optimize the SDLC process. All right, everyone. Today we're learning about Kodiak, the platform, why it's needed, what's changing, and how to think about it in terms of the software development lifecycle. I'm here with Mike Friedel, who's CEO and co-founder of Kodiak. Hey, Mark. How are you doing? Mark is on the road. What 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 highway are you on? What rest stop? What town? I-10. And I'm just outside Lafayette, Louisiana, making the trip between Houston and Tampa. Oh, right on. And Ben Ghazi, co-founder of Kodiak. Hey, Ben. Hey, how's it going? Where are you? Where, where are you from? Where are you? Where are you uh, calling in from today? I'm in Houston. Right ah, to, uh, okay. Yeah, he's he's leaving. He's leaving my part of town, going back to his place. Uh, okay, good. Well, so we're going to talk about the Kodiak platform. We're going to talk about why it's needed and what's changing again. And so, what we want to do is uh, just give a general overview here, a general overview of Kodiak, and then we're going to get a quick demo, and then we'll. Finish it, finish it up with some more conversation. So I just wanted to start, you know, by asking about the core technology itself. We're coming up to KubeCon and there's a lot of people who are going to be looking at their platforms and, and how they work. You know, what are the, what are the company's roots and, and what problems did you see that sets you on this journey that you're on? Mark? Sure. Uh, the roots, basically, we've been application architects uh, for the last couple of decades um, and watching what was going on in software um, and 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 DevOps and whatnot, it was started to get to a point where, hey, look, there's a lot of great tech out there, but we haven't really productized all of it. And, and there's a lot of good opportunity to say, hey, the stuff that today is no longer art, but science is stuff that I want to get quick, easy, out of my way so I can get onto the next piece of tech and start thinking at the next level. And, and that's really kind of, was really the birth of Kodiak to say, hey, look, there's this opportunity. Um, when the IAC was out there, the cloud is out there, um, and and Kubernetes walks into the door, and we have orchestration, we have all this, all this opportunity to put all these pieces together and make a really great whole uh, that really sort of propels the the product development. And basically, we Ben and I both put that uh, put that idea into practice and uh, and went for it a couple, about five years ago. Ben, you must have some stories about those early days working with Kubernetes. <laughs> yeah, we, I, I have stories of Kubernetes today yeah it, we've got some wild stories um especially the early days of, of kodiak we sort of always carried a couple customers with us uh, as we built the product and uh you know consulting on this side build the product at night right kind of, yeah kind of thing and yeah i mean th there's kubernetes is, is is like the best place in the world to have your app running and like the worst place in the world for a team to run an app. <laughs> you know? It's like, it's, it's wildly uh, difficult and, and esoteric and nuanced, right? And it's like, yeah, but once you get it working, man, it's perfect, it's beautiful, it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, we, as we were building the product, you know, one of our biggest things that we bring to the table is is ingressing and we can do it programmatically we can do it automatically and we do it really well really well with certs uh i can tell you from those really really early days the first year we were building this thing and we just could not get the thing to work properly work reliably right and then finally we had that aha moment right with ingressing where it's like oh, that changed everything it's so good um, and now our customers love it. Like that's, that's one of our, when I do these demos, like 
the one big thing is, well, there's a bunch of different things, but everybody always talks about, you know, you, <laughs> we even got some really, really fun Terraform guys that they do this stuff for a living all day, every day. Yeah, and they're like, yeah. You can't do that. You literally can't do that. And we're like, <laughs> look, I don't know what to tell you. It's already been done. Like it, you just, you just did it. It like the system did it for you. It's done. So these aha moments are, are pretty fun to watch people, you know, get it. Well, let's get into the demo. Maybe you could talk about that, you know, that ingress capability that really changed things and yeah, sure. show us, uh, you know, what this makes uh, customers liking it so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so ingress is sort of um, a piece of it. And Mark and I really wanted to take a, a holistic approach yes, to, great. you know, automation. Um, so yeah, we'll start there. Let's do that. Um, all right. So here we are inside of Kodiak. And when you, when you jump in, the first thing that you see is all your environments on, on one screen together, right? So one of the biggest problems in the industry is, I just don't even know where my stuff is. Like, I don't even know where in AWS do I go to find this? Where in Azure do I go to find this? Like, how do I put all this stuff together? So, you know, the first thing that you see here is like one pretty clean screen that is that is basically like a set of environments with a set of um, boxes in them. These boxes, we call them cabinets. They're they're tied to namespaces, but there's a little bit more going on than just namespaces here. Um, and so you have a multi-cloud, multi-cluster implementation of your software company running here on one screen. So already we're already sort of, sort of level setting like what your experience is going to be here. Um, and so we wanted to be able to say, well, look, at any moment, I want to be able to you know, deploy that thing out or manage this container or, you know, set those configurations. Um, but I don't want to have to know all the esoteric syntax of, of how to put all this stuff together. So if, you know, take the dev environment, for example, I've got a dev environment and it's running, you know, um, my systems, it's running my products. I've got a whiz bang product in here that's got an API on it. I've got a front end, another you know public API. It's all running different versions. Kodiak helps you version this stuff, um, but it also will tell you like, hey, you know this is running out in this cluster. Uh, ben created it. Here are the things we're talking about with this version of the system. Um, here's all of the history of the dev environment. You know, successes and failures. Right? Who did what? when here's all your microservices that we deployed. Um, and so we were talking about ingressing, right? And so we can now have a conversation about, um, and this one doesn't have any, but I'll go to one that does have ingress. Uh, oh, no, it doesn't either. It's a demo. We're always gonna have demo issues with demos. It's quite the clean interface. It's, uh, it's really well, well done. Yeah, thank you. So um, let's just get let's get a new environment, right? So what Kodiak what Kodiak can do and bring to to the table, you know, everybody's asking what is Kodiak? It's infrastructure on demand. It's container and and cluster management, and it's software development uh, lifecycle work. So when a team member says, "Hey, I need I need to work on that payment gateway." Um, they can literally come in themselves and say, I need a, I need a, an environment for that payment fix. Right. And I also need to be able to say, I know Mark was working on that payment thing. I don't know the version number. Right? I never remember the version number. Um, but it was, it was in that sprint, uh, 14. Uh, where's my stuff? Did I delete all my tags here? You know, while you're looking, that that's a real commentary on GitOps, isn't it? I mean, it provides you, you know, and I know that you do provide snapshots and such, but being able to look back at that history very simply through an interface is, um, you know, looks like it's a kind of core aspect of what you're providing. 
That's exactly right. I mean, that this is we want to be able to say, look, the nuance of cloud tech is is insulated from you or for you. And now you're able to just say, well, look, I, I am looking for that payment gateway thing. Um, let's dump that into my new environment. Oh, it's a drag. And I also off. need like, I need my front end in there. So let's go find my front end and we can put this. Oh, here's the portal fix thing. Yeah. So whoever tagged this as portal fix, that's what I was looking for. And so that's great. I also need that that Redis worker to get my payment thing working. So I have tags and all these things. And so bang, I, I can put together an environment that is configured, memory and CPU, all the infrastructure is, done, is completed for you. We'll even pull secrets and set secrets in the cluster for you. But we also do ingressing, right? And so we can, we can now say, well, great, this this thing is up and running and, and healthy. So, you know, we can go open this thing up. It takes a little while for the certs to cert up, but once they do, we'll have this environment working for us and we'll be able to go use it and work on it and, and have, you know, have a team use this environment lock, stock and barrel, right? So now we're, we're shifting that conversation from, you know, uh, do I send it through a CI/CD pipeline? How many microservices do I need to get in there? Who's configuring these things? Who's managing this stuff? Like now, you can just actually go do experimentation and play with this stuff and work on it yourself. And and it's all done through the API, correct? A hundred percent of Kodiak is API driven, right? So we have we we API into Kubernetes, we API against Azure, we API against AWS. Um, in fact, this, this front end here is a front end to our API, which is running on my local machine. So when you start Kodiak, you're actually starting a, a running container on your laptop or inside of CICD. So it's sort of this unique on-prem-ish type of solution. Right. That, you know, yeah, we're, we're basically managing all your... AWS and Azure tokens for you so that you don't ever have to re-log in, right? So like remembering your AWS for East US, remembering the token for that, you know, keeping keeping track of this stuff is, that alone is mind-numbing uh, when it comes to like being productive. Yeah. Kodak just does it for you. We just, we manage all those tokens for you. We manage these, these multi-cloud implementations for you. But again, Mark, that speaks to how Kubernetes is great for managing applications, but the people part is a real is is a real troublemaker for, troublemaker for people. Oh, absolutely, life. yeah. the The promise of Kubernetes, I mean, for, since the first day I walked in the door years ago, is phenomenal. It's it's that moment, you know. I remember the first time I used it and I saw what it could do. Um, it was sort of a culmination of all, all these things that we've been trying to do for a really long time, and and here it was. And then you find out what a steep hill it is to climb to to get all those pieces together. And then on top of that, you you know having having to perform a small task is not that big a deal. Having to uh, write a small script or uh, you know mark an update into a into a YAML file somewhere that's not that big a deal. But having to do that for everything. And having to do that for, say, I've got 30 services that are running all these different versions. I've got all these different environments. And in fact, I want to create a new environment on the fly. How do you do that by hand? It's just not going to happen. And, and so you know, the ability to say, I can collaborate, I can collaborate on, on, on what my intuition is, which is, I need this version of that thing over here so that I can work on it. And then we can start having a better conversation with the guys we're collaborating with and the women that we're working with on the uh, on the other side. So, like, anyway, that the the facility of doing these very basic things, but doing them en masse, um, really helps the team develop uh, a better workflow and a, and a better uh, automation strategy. So, I I wonder about how you're platform manages the actual scale that comes for a lot of organizations. And I think we're reaching that maturity gir- the curve with Kubernetes where people are realizing, wait a second, I don't need a cluster for everything. I, you know, you know, 
I should be using Kubernetes for what it's good for, and that's for working at scale. But the scale becomes quite complex, and that reflects changes that you need to think about CICD. It reflects changes you need to think about you know, deployment and efficiency in your deployments. How does your platform manage that? Is it all being done through the API, and do the users get some ability to kind of control that you know, through their, through their interface? Yeah, uh, just like uh, in all the Kodiak features, um, there's a, everything is designed for the intuition and everything's designed for reuse and repeatability. So it, it may be simple, like I was saying, to write down, hey, let's make an HPA, a horizontal pod autoscaler um, that works off of memory and another one that works off of CPU and has these performance characteristics. Um, you can do that in a short period of time. Um, it would be nice to be able to copy that to another asset it would also uh, be nice to be able to say, well, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to need that done every time we deploy. And and do I now have to script that thing out? Do I have to, what do I have to do to that to make it repeatable? And also, if I'm the only one that can run that script or really knows how that thing works or really knows how that was put together, that's just not very good for the team. What you really need is you need to be able to say, hey, I put an HPA out there. Anybody can use it. Anywhere in our, our ecosystem, just hit go. Um, that's a really important part of being able to move fast um, and and make changes. So, yeah, I would say that there's there's um there's a big component here that I think we're we're walking around, and it's it's this ability to you know your point about scaling out uh, your ops, your automation, and your Kubernetes is is really a, you know a it's an acute issue for everybody that's doing it. And the, the real problem is state management, you know, knowing where my stuff is and how it, how it's supposed to be put together. So Kodiak brings that to the table. We're this central orchestration for all of your clusters across all clouds, right? So when it's time to sunset that old 1.22 version of, of Kubernetes, you can literally take all of your objects out of that cluster, put them on a new cluster with a drag and drop, and you're off to the races. To yeah. your point, you were talking about snapshots. Yeah. That's what snapshots can yeah. do for you. So I'll show you what that looks like. That's that's what I was curious about. Yeah, great. Yeah. Let me see that. Yeah, while he's putting that up, uh, real quick, uh, we've had plenty of customers come to us talking about Kubernetes scale saying, um, you know, that's what I we we got into Kubernetes for. It's just that we haven't gotten to it yet because we're really busy and we don't have the time to put into it. Um, that's where a tool like this can really come in handy. Mark, so this is I'm going to add a new environment. Uh, Mark, this uh, MCF AZ West two. That's a good one for us to play with, huh? That might be. Yeah. <laughs> that might be an old one. These are well. That's great. Let's see if an old one will go. Um, these are all clusters, right? That that Kodiak has created for us. And okay. Creating a, creating a cluster through Kodiak is literally like seven seven th you know questions in our CLI. Um, anyways, let's let's go have some fun with it. Let's see. Um, I want to create a new environment. I want to call this uh, Alpha, and I want to put it on this old or this cluster instead of this because this is where my production cluster is now. Um, so let's put it on this new cluster. And here's what Snapshots does for you. So that whole paradigm of, you know, we broke up the monolith, now we're in containers and microservices. Yeah. Container management is a utter nightmare. nightmare and, and honestly, it shouldn't be. Like containers is beautiful and it's awesome, but managing a broken up system, you know, five APIs over here, a couple of front ends, a couple of workers over here, like it's, it's incredibly difficult, right? So like Kodiak is saying, look, yes, container management is absolutely crucial, you know, on a component level, but there's something higher than that. There's, there's the system that we need to be thinking about and worried about. And that system is what nobody is, is really focusing on. And so we're saying, well, look, every time you deploy a, a, a workload, a container to any cluster that you 
that you've ever created with Kodiak, every time you do that deployment, if we haven't seen this collection of, of workloads together at these exact versions, we're going to say, hey, that's a new system version. And that's a snapshot. So now I can say, I have a perfect snapshot of what is happening in my production blue environment. I can put tags on it. I can have metadata on it. Um, I know for sure, if I want to recreate my production environment, I can pick this thing up literally and drag this off into my alpha uh, environment. And so it's going to pick up all those microservices that were in blue at exactly the right versions. Right. And now I get to go literally, you know, deploy that to alpha, uh, get this new environment up and running and healthy and simply switch my ingress over from the old cluster, old production to my new cluster, my new production. And now we're cluster hopping and leaving the old clusters behind. Right. Ah, so that's that's snapshots. It's it's system management, right? It's not container management. It's managing the collection of containers. Can you then create ephemeral clusters? Then can you do that? Ah, Mark, you want to take that question? <laughs> uh, ephemeral clusters? Yes. I mean, we, we we you create your clusters in Kodiak, and Kod we do that with the CLI. And uh, you can customize, obviously choose whether you're going, you know, which cloud provider you're going to put it on. And uh, based on that cloud provider, what specs you may need, um, that cluster goes up and then you attach it to an environment. And so these, these uh, clusters that you see down here are the ones that we have attached to that environment. And so now your clusters are, uh, they're now sort of in, that, in, the, in the system ready to be used for, by a cabinet that, that Ben's showing you right here. So again, uh, I add a new cluster, I attach it to an environment, I'm done with this other cluster, I can drop the cabinets that are on it, and then I can drop it from the environment. And we're working and, and basically treating our clusters like chattel. And and that's, a, that's something that I know a lot of people have had a lot of trouble with, um, because a lot of people put a lot of effort into the development of the clusters and all the, all the nuance that goes into it afterwards. Um, the ability to set that up, again, I'm going to say it repeatabil repeatably, and to be able to say, hey, look, the cluster, this cluster is created. It's created the way we need it. And when I'm done with it, I'm throwing it out. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm going to delete it. It's going to be gone. And then I'm going to use our new cluster um, simply by adding and removing them from these environments. So what about all that crazy nuance and all that coding and all that time and effort that I've I put into my little baby over here, this cluster over here? We say, don't worry about it. Don't grow attached to the clusters because you can drop them and recreate them at will. Right. You can recreate them at any point. Right, that's right. Of that virtual cluster capability. You yeah, know, and that's, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, we're coming up to just uh, the end of the show, so wanted to just kind of sum things up here. And you know, the snapshots are critical. You know, it seems like you've got an interface that allows you to um, you know, to archive a lot of the components that you've been using, so then you can pick and choose what you really need, and you know what you're needing. I expect there's a pretty deep search functionality behind what you offer here as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, arch the archiving of snapshots is is a big deal. Yeah, um, yeah, and it, it really just shows you your whole history. You know, like talking about you know be, being audited and knowing where your stuff is is so important, and it's really really hard these days. So, and I imagine there's a deep identity component to this, so people can't just jump into any cluster that they wish to jump into. Yeah, that's right. So, we, you know, we have to support Arbok. Um, we have, we have our box support here and, and, you know, we're, we're putting in right now this quarter, the ability to absorb, uh, your SSO and Sam also, you know, we can follow your AD, we can follow your, your organization federated. Um, but if you don't have it, our, our is actually pretty straightforward and it's, it's really nice, you know, especially through the CLI, um, everything that we do here is, is you can do in the CLI. So we, we do everything just as cleanly as possible. That's the whole idea. So it seems to me like, you know, where you're going is almost like we're thinking about a transformation of what the platform actually means, right? So like we've become so caught up in the complexity of the platforms that it's difficult to almost take a step back. And that's kind of think what you've really been trying to do here, you know, is take that step Absolutely. back. And thinking about container management from a different context. 
Absolutely. There, there's there's a lot of conversations that a good competitive team can be having about the latest tech, about what they want their their uh, their enterprise to do. The the engineering discussions of how well is it running and how do we need to tweak it and where are the where are the bottlenecks and where what do we need to give attention to. Um, and we sort of lost that a little bit when we we got buried in the in the the myriad details. Um, I think yeah. the ability to say there's a lot of this that is science. Let's remember that if it's science and we can make an algorithm for it, let's get that out of our way. Um, so we're really we're really uh, pushing hard on that. Yeah, I mean, you said it like the it's really the 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 cognitive overload of how you know how how hard does it is it to get right. my systems and my, my company to scale the way we know we should, you know? And, and so it's something like this where the status quo is CI CD pipeline after CI CD pipeline for each environment, for each microservice, for, you know, for each. Right. Get repo. And, you know, we're coming in and saying, well, it doesn't have to be like that. You can, you can actually just, basically archive all that information. You can, yeah, add, like you can have available. One, you don't you literally can have all in multiple pipeline. microservices, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the last question I have is, where are you going from here? And is there anything else you just would like to just, you know, like to say before we uh, before we end up? Uh, yeah, we're um, getting into GPUs pretty heavy, mm -hmm. uh, and we're getting into, um, you know, uh, the ability to say we can cluster GPUs in Kubernetes, but we can also cluster GPUs um, in a different cluster mm -hmm. that makes makes things wildly more efficient. Um, that's what our customers have been asking for. And so we're, we're getting into stuff like that. Mark, what do you think? Um, yeah, that, <laughs> um, we're, we're really, we've got a couple, we've, we've worked with a few, um, ML companies and there's a lot still to be discovered about the, those workflows. Um, and, and like we were talking about earlier, when you can have, when you can have an elevated discussion about what's going on in that organization, rather than getting mired in the details, you can have. You, you can really put yourself ahead and put yourself into better better tech. And when it comes to um, the cost of a mistake or the cost of an inefficient part of the system starting to become astronomical when you're talking about GPUs and whatnot, a lot of those decisions become really important. So what we want to be doing is speaking intelligently and looking intelligently at our enterprise as a whole and the performance of it, the scaling of it, and have we chose wisely. Um, well, how are you? How are you going to have those conversations? Well, you need good tech and you need good tooling to have the right people in the room having the right discussion. I mean, we've all been there. I just spent the last two days trying to fix this thing and it turned out to be some weird spelling of a weird thing that I had to look up in the docs. Like that happens and it's it's incredibly costly. And, and the ability to put that team on a, on a footing that will... Um, elevate their thinking and elevate their discussions. Um, I'm really excited about it. Like, I'm really excited about find out what people start talking about once they're using Kodiak and what types of conversations uh, they're having, and, and to see where that leads uh, because it's it's really it's it's really upping the game a bit. Well, well, nice work. It's pretty cool stuff. Thank you very much for your time, Mark and Ben, and we look forward to talking with you soon. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having us. It's great to be here. Thanks. See ya. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.